here is my Seo device O3C rapid trigger keypad and just over a month ago I made two videos on this and that was just after it arrived. The first one I made before I'd even used it to play the game I was just looking at the build quality and just how sensitive the keys were which they still are. And the second one was just me playing some maps. And now that some time has passed for me to actually use it I think it won't do any harm if I do another video just talking about it. And if you're busy and you don't have time, then if you play Osu and enjoy it a fair amount, then I would get this. It's very cheap. It's like £18. So unless you're really, uh, <laughs> really struggling, then I would recommend this. And the actual cost of this device brings us nicely onto the next point I want to address in this video. And that is the countless accusations of the build quality, or at least the durability of this product being very poor. I don't know whether it's by competing brands or people who have already paid for a more expensive option, but people will say it's so cheap it breaks after two weeks, you touch it once, it will disintegrate, it won't work anymore. And I would disagree, right? So obviously I've only been using it for a month, so you have that argument, that's not a very long time. But the reason why I disagree with that is because there is a recalibration option on the device itself. So if you think the sensors are maybe dodgy or whatever, then you can recalibrate it and from my experience and it's as good as new. So it's not turning the raw data into the clicks, it's getting the raw data which is calibrated within a certain range. And of course when I first got it I was very gentle, I didn't want to break it, I got this nice new what's it. But after about half an hour you just completely forget about that, you're doing this or whatever, I don't know. And it's still fine, I've not been particularly careful with it, I've not been throwing it about, right I'm sure then you might have some issues. But I've not been extremely careful with it, I've just used it as anyone would and it's completely fine. Now, the next big point of this video is how much does it actually help you? Because it's all good saying, oh, it lasts, it doesn't break. But if it doesn't help, then why does it? Why do I care, right? Again, uh, long story short, I would say that it does help quite a bit. And that this, this brings me on to quite an interesting point, I think. If you're anything like me, then when there's something like this, which you have uh, very sensitive, right? But you can adjust it, so it's not completely sensitive. When you see other people using it, and it's not as sensitive, or it's not as extreme as whatever setting that is, you get very frustrated. And at first I had that mindset as I usually do, but now I understand when I use it, I will not have it as sensitive as it goes because the release can be so, so little. I think this is uh, almost, this is one unit off the most precise it can be. But if it's, if it is the most sensitive, then you will accidentally release uh, on sliders or whatever, or you will give an extra input. And again, the sounds, it's like, oh, an extra input, you, you don't miss, but it's not synced up to your tapping. It's not a good input. I think my camera's running out of battery. Um, I'll have to make this quick. So for the most part, I do not play with it on the most sensitive settings because you will inevitably give uh, an input which should not be there. Unless you're trying to be very quick, in which case you want this uh, rapid trigger. But I would say, if you're doing a fast map, you don't need that. And this is where I want to mention another setting. So there are three settings that each key can have, right? There's a press, a release, and a dead zone. So I'll start with the release point, okay? If the key is ever actuating and has just actuated, the instant it actuates, it needs to lift up the release amount before it deactuates, okay? And that's from the instant that it begins to actuate. The actuation point is from as soon as that happens, how far it must travel downwards in order to reactuate. So if you have them both at close to zero, you can do this and it will work. It'll be like should probably use this, but I can't be bothered to change the settings for each one. If you have a very low release and a high press, so it actuates and then it unreleases, but then you need to travel all of the press downwards before it reactuates. And similarly, if you have a very high release and a low press, it means it actuates, you lift up long release, and then the instant you press down, that's when it will reactuate. And finally is the dead zone one. And this is essentially the same as press, how far it needs to travel, but this is only for the top raw units at the very top of the key altitude, right? And I think this is probably um, a feature that most people, you'll look at and in theory say, oh, it doesn't make a difference, right? But this means that you can still get the benefit of having the rapid trigger without having it actuate as soon as you press it. This is what I was saying about the settings. It's like, oh yeah, but why would I want that? Why do I want there to be a delay after I press it. That's the exact opposite of why I'm looking to get this keypad. And I'm completely making this up, right? This could be wrong. I feel I'm more consistent with it. The reason being, 
I'm assuming. Okay, when you're starting to press, assuming you keep your finger on it, then this will actuate the moment you start moving your finger, which is inconsistent. If you're trying to do the full press, that will be more consistent with your push, right? Like when you start, it's such a small movement that it's unpredictable. And the time that it actually takes to actuate the key, I think it's, is it four millimeters? So yeah, for about four millimeters. It's, it's so, it's a couple milliseconds at best, right? Especially if you're pushing normally, it's not long. And so the trade-off of it taking longer to go from here to here is definitely worth the added consistency that you gain from not starting it at this unpredictable bit at the start of your key press. It's the more consistent ending. Again, I'm completely making this up. This could be wrong, but I, that's my experience. That's what I feel. The true benefit doesn't come from the fact that you only need to press the key a tiny bit. It comes from the fact you only need to press it a tiny bit after you have released it. This is This is the benefit. And that does mean, uh, this whole settings thing means that if the dead zone is less than the press, then it won't matter because that dead zone will be applied at the top, whereas the press is like, it's still being applied and that will be global for the whole altitude. And I want to say, I did try to get used to it, having the very immediate pressing, but I, even after an hour of playing with it, as soon as I went back to 12 in the units, which is 12 times 0.05 millimeters, which is still a very, very small amount of space. It's just so much more consistent, even though it's technically more latency, but it's such a small amount because the key is so short and your fingers go so quick. But definitely for jump maps where um, you're just trying to tap precisely, because uh, your your cursor isn't in the circle for long if you're doing like these fast jumps, then that definitely helps. And that's where having the lower actuation point happens. See, 12 of these units is still low compared to a normal key, but having it at one is just so short that it's, it's useless. So you still get the benefit of having the short actuation for these precise like jumps. And obviously the biggest benefit is the speed, like, It, you can just see hang on let me do let me get my normal keyboard and just show you what happens if i do the same there's some moments of maybe explosive bursts where i can like half do it but that like oh my gosh look at this look, this is the direct comparison this is my normal keyboard i'm i promise you i'm trying like and that's like not my actual hand so well it's my actual hand you okay so overall, I would definitely recommend this, as I said earlier, if you have any interest in the game and you're not completely poor, then why not? I believe that's all I have to say about it. Thank you for subscribing. So yeah, so have a fantastic day. Unless you're Mendoza, have a brilliant day. I'll see you around.